Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Numbers. And as always, many many thanks to all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Today in part 7 we talk more about the integers. One possible motivation for them could be that in the natural numbers n0, the equation 4 plus x is equal to 0 is not solvable. Something we would call an inverse of 4 is missing in n0. Therefore, constructing the integers means for all natural numbers we have to construct suitable inverses. In fact, we have already done that in the last video where we have defined z. Therefore, you already know it's simply the set of all equivalence classes. And such an equivalence class consists of pairs coming from n0 squared. Okay, maybe it's helpful to write it down again. So the equivalence class of AB is defined as a set of all pairs xy that satisfy that they are equivalent to AB. Then of course what you also need is the definition of the equivalence relation here. So xy and AB are called equivalent if they fulfill that x plus b is equal to a plus y. Now the visualization for this equivalence we gave in the last video was simply that the jump from y to x has the same value as the jump from b to a. And indeed this is the key idea to find the inverses. Now I should also tell you for the set of all equivalence classes there is a common notation one uses. One takes the original set which is n0 squared here and divides by the equivalence relation. And one reads that as modulo tilde. Later you will see why this is indeed a useful notation. Now in the last video we've already seen that we get all the equivalence classes when we go through all the natural numbers in the first component where we keep the second component as zero and afterwards we also have to go through all the natural numbers in the second component. Hence here we have indeed all the elements in Z. So it might be useful to introduce new shorter names for all these elements. The first one is the jump with value zero so let's just call it zero. However, to distinguish it from the original 0 in n0, let's introduce an index z here. Similarly, the jump with value 1, we just call 1 with index z. And then we just continue with the new names here on the left hand side. However, now on the right hand side, we have the negative jumps. Therefore, a suitable name here would be to call it minus 1. But also here, I want to use the index z. And then in the same way we can just continue with the new names on the right hand side here. Now with this the integers look much more familiar. For example z can now be written as the set of all these numbers that go in both directions. Okay at this point the natural question should be can we now solve the equation from the beginning. More correctly we should now formulate the question in z. Is 4 plus x is equal to 0 now with numbers in z solvable. Moreover, in the case it actually is, is the solution then given by minus 4. However, at this point you are critical enough to say, wait a moment, we first have to define the plus sign for the new set. Therefore the first question we should answer is, what is the addition now as a map that gets two integers as an input? Okay, I would say let's immediately do that. So let's take two arbitrary integers which means two equivalence classes. And as always they are represented with two pairs. Here we can also take the visualization with the jumps so we have a here and b here and c and d on the right. With this you now should see the only useful definition we can have is adding the two jumps. Which means we should add the target points and also the starting points. With that we have our definition of the new plus sign just by using the old plus sign inside. However, when we write something like this inside the equivalence class, we always have to show that it is well defined. This simply means if we choose different representations for the equivalence classes on the left, this shouldn't change the result on the right. So we really want to add the boxes and not just single elements inside. Indeed here it's not hard to show at all. So let's take another element that is equivalent to a b and let's call it a tilde b tilde. And in the same way let's take an element that is equivalent to c d. Now when we use our definition of the addition here we get this as the result. 
And here you see, we add the same boxes as before, therefore the result should also be the same. In other words, the equivalence class should be the same, therefore this element should be equivalent to this one. Okay, then let's write down a proof. First you should see, we use these two equivalences here as the assumptions. However, you already know what they mean. The first one would say a tilde plus b is the same as a plus b tilde. And in a similar way for the other ones. And now we can just put both things together. Which simply means we add these numbers and these numbers. Then reordering the numbers gives us this equality. There you should see, this is in fact by definition the equivalence of the two pairs here. And that's exactly what we wanted to show, therefore the map is indeed well defined. Okay, with this let's look at some practical examples for the new addition. Of course, we don't want to lose the results we already had for the natural numbers. Therefore, for the first example, just let's calculate 4 plus 2. By definition we know 4 in Z is just the equivalence class 4, 0. And for 2 in Z we have the equivalence class of 2, 0. At this point we know how the addition should work. First we sum up the first components and then the second components. So here we get 6, 0. Which is by definition just 6 as an integer. So you see, this is exactly what we expected. Similarly, all the additions we already had for the natural numbers will translate to the integers in the same way. Hence, let's try something new by adding 4 and minus 4. Here we need to use that minus 4 is given by the equivalence class of 0, 4. And then we can just use the definition of the addition again. Which means that we get 4, 4 here. However, this is the same as the equivalence class of 0, 0. And we immediately see this is just the integer 0. This means that we now have actually found an inverse of the number 4. However, you immediately see this whole procedure works for every integer. Hence, every number in Z has indeed an inverse element. In this case, we don't need the subtraction as a new operation, we can just use the normal addition in combination with the inverses. Okay, I think it's a good idea to summarize all the things we know about the integers. In other words, the properties the set Z has together with the addition. Please keep in mind, the addition here is given as a map. And of course, it's not the same map we had for the natural numbers. However, we still have the same properties. First of all, it's also associative, so we can set parentheses as we want. Then you might guess the second property we have is the commutative law. So we can also change the order as we want. And finally the third property is also known from the natural numbers. We have a neutral element. So adding 0 does not change anything, no matter which integer m we choose here. This is all not so surprising because we used the old addition for the natural numbers for the definition of this new addition. So all these rules are immediately carried over. However, now we also get a new one. So for each integer m, we find another integer, let's call it m tilde, with the property that m plus m tilde is the neutral element. And this m tilde we call the inverse of m with respect to the addition. Okay, now these four rules are so important that the whole thing gets its own name. So we say z together with the addition is a so-called abelian group. In other words, in an abelian group we have all these nice calculation rules. Okay, so you see the addition in the integers is very nice. Therefore, in the next step we have to look at the multiplication. With this, I hope I see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.